So today we're going to take this footage here and we're going to turn it into this footage here with the new Pixis camera. G'day, welcome back. Hello, how are we all doing? I'm doing well. It is a beautiful Sunday morning in Melbourne. So what do we do? We stay inside and record a YouTube video. Of course, why would you want to be out in the sun? So I'll try and make this pretty quick today, actually. A couple of disclaimers straight off the bat. This is not my footage. I didn't shoot it. I didn't color it. I have no affiliation whatsoever with the people who made this amazing looking stuff. I could never be as good as this colorist, obviously. But the person who shot it is named Patrick O'Sullivan. He is an amazing Australian cinematographer. I don't know him personally. If you ever want to learn about cinematography, go to his YouTube channel. It is so great. You will learn so much from this guy. Free advice. It is fantastic. This is the one that I recommend the most about cinematography. He and Black Magic went out and shot this footage with their new Pixis camera. Uh, the camera is really great. I've never used it, but the footage that I'm working with is fantastic. And then they went back and they graded it and they put it up on their website and on his YouTube channel. So if you actually want to see the whole thing, then go on to his channel and you can view it. It's really, really good stuff, like really well made, beautifully shot stuff. And again, I have no affiliation. He probably has no idea I'm making this video, but he is a fantastic cinematographer. Now you can actually download this footage and I'll show you how to do that just in a little bit. But first of all, what I decided to do is I thought I would try and recreate that grade as close as I could. Now, I didn't get perfectly spot on. I kind of rushed it. I had a lot of things to do. I lack in free time. But today I thought we'd just go through it and we'd talk about it. So let's go through the grade really quickly. So let's turn everything off. So now that we have all these nodes off, let's go through the grade. The first thing we wanted to do is we want to set up to make sure we're working in the proper color space. So what we're going to do is come down our project settings here, little cog come up to color management, sorry, come up to camera raw, actually color management. So this is my color space transforms because I'm working in the node CSTs. I'm not setting up my color management in the settings here. I'm doing it through my nodes here. But because this is Blackmagic raw, we don't actually have to set up the IDT, the initial input, we can do it in a camera raw setting. So in my color raw settings here under black magic raw for my color science, I'm just using camera metadata. I know this is most likely shot in gen five, so that's fine by me. White balance as shot. I don't need to change this because the way they shot it on the day is most likely the way you want it to grade with it. Now my color space, I'm working in DaVinci white gamut, gamma, DaVinci intermediate, and et cetera, et cetera. You can turn on highlight recovery and all that kind of stuff, but I'm just gonna leave it as is. Everything else is the way I want it to be. So that's all good. Now what we want to do is we want to work with a CST. So under my CST here, my node, turn that on. And then under my settings here, we're going back from that Vinci, Vinci Intermediate, Rec 79, Gamma 2.4, Lumens Mapping, etc., etc. So you've seen this a million times before, but if you haven't, you can just pause the video now and copy these. And this is what I always work with. So we can get rid of that. So when it comes to the actual grade, I had no idea if they're working under a LUT, I assume that they were working under a LUT and I didn't know which one, obviously. So I tried to make one that was just basically giving my image a nice starting point. So I'm working under this LUT here. This is with that LUT off. We have a pretty washed out image. It looks really warm, it's quite nice. And this is with the LUT on. We're just getting a little bit more saturation and a little bit more contrast. It's not doing a whole bunch. I didn't want it to do too much. I wanted to keep it quite simple, but it still, it looks very nice. Now moving on, I actually started with my balance node here. We'll bring this across. So this is off, this is on. I'm just putting my, my balance in a better position so it's not so warm. So after my balance node, I actually worked in not a really good order. To be honest, I was really rushing to get this grade done, but we've done some things with our lights here. So if you turn these on here, we've created this area here. We're trying to fix up and we've also made this little vignette here. So we go to the other footage here. We have this line coming down here. So what I've tried to do is just mimic that. And then I just add a little bit more saturation in her jumper here, not too much. But what I really wanted to focus on was her skin tones. Now, obviously I did a exposure change towards the end here, which should have been at the start. But again, I really did rush this. A little bit of a balance change here. Um, the shadows were a bit dark, so just brought that up using my curves here, so off, on, just pushing it up just to get a little bit more level in our shadows, a little bit more detail. Now this one's not going to work because it's an outside node. So what I've done is a lens blur to make it a little bit more focused on her. And again, similar to this one here, these are the lights. So we've got these lights here. Again, these three are basically connected together. I couldn't get them exactly the way they had them. If I had spent more time on it, 
I could have done it, but again, I kind of rushed it. Again, with the jumper, added a little bit more saturation. It just wasn't hitting the level I wanted to. I actually feel like this is a little too saturated compared to theirs. Actually, it's a lot too saturated. You know what? We don't even need that note. Let's turn it off. So then I created a vignette around our character here. Just to darken these edges out. Again, with this wall here, that's doing the streak of light here. So basically this one is working with this one. What I can do is turn on my power windows and see what's going on. So this one here doing this, but then this one is the inside of that one. So this is off and this is on. And the reason why this works so well it's just breaking up that background, so we're creating more layers. So we go to the other one, see how that has a streak too. Now mine, again, isn't quite spot on, but that's okay. With our right one here, I'm just focusing on this wall here, trying to get that similar. Pretty close, but not quite there. So with this jumper here, this is a bit weird, this one, but if you look at the other footage here, okay, so desaturated, turn this on. Again, it's not quite there, but that is okay. I've created two nodes here. So in this node here, we're brightening up her skin tone here and changing basically everything around, but we're really just focusing on her skin tone here. So the reason why this has changed so much is because it actually has a outside node here. I felt like it was doing too much, so I needed to sort of bring it back to a good level here. Now with her skin tone, what I've really tried to do is just brought it down just a little bit. And then in the HDR, just sort of put that exposure just up a little bit more and I've actually got some base refinement on which I never normally use but I thought I would try and get it as close to theirs as possible so I just add a little bit more contrast and I've just sort of taken away some of that sharpness because if you look at their image there it's actually quite soft so then I thought I'd go back and take away some of that softness a lot of that softness will actually come into effect once I put that noise reduction on at the end. So after I've done that, I decided that I could add even more adjustments to the skin. So what I've done is I've made another node and I've just copied this power window across. Now, if you don't know how to do that, all you gotta do is come down your power window here, click these three little buttons, make sure you're on the power button, of course, copy window, make a new node, and then again, three little dots, paste window, bang. That's it, simple as that. So if we turn this node on here, we're getting much better skin tones. The thing that I really liked about their skin tones is you see these lines here. Now I hope you can pick this up on YouTube, but the reason why their skin tone looks really good is because it's not just one color. So what they've essentially done is that they've made a grade on their skin here. And then in that same node, or maybe another one, I'm not sure. I'm just guessing here, but this is what I think. They've created a different grade on a different part of their skin. I can show you what they mean. If we turn this off, as you can see, it's a little bit too one color. So what I've done in my HDR under the light section, I've just, let's just turn this on, hit these areas here and then pushed it ever so slightly towards the tealy color and made it a little bit brighter. Then in my shadows, what I've done also is just slightly pushed it towards a more magenta -y red color and just taken some of those shadows down. And this is creating nice contrast in our skin, but it's also helping to break up the color. So this is off and this is on. Now, hopefully you guys can pick that up on YouTube. So off, on, and you can just see these brighter areas here. It's just helping to break up the skin. And I think that is something that really, really helps with skin tones. I didn't want to do a qualifier because I don't like using a qualifier because that is something that unfortunately leads to breaking. So I just wanted to make sure that I could do it in the HDR wheel and then not have to worry about breaking or anything like that. So what else have I done? Now, after I've done all this, I wanted to do a trim for my highlights here. So in my waveform here, looking up pretty high. So what I've done is just a little bit of a trim and I'm just sort of bringing those highlights down to get them in a better spot. So this is before and this is afterwards. So I kind of wanted to just sort of, I guess, mash those highlights together, not have it so blown out. In a way, it's still blown out, but it just looks a little bit better. At the moment, it, to me, it was like catching my eye too much. And if you look at theirs, theirs is very similar. So they have this sort of a similar way. I actually think I've gone too far, so we could just bring it up a little bit more. Yeah, so we're just sort of like taking this down a little bit and it's just sitting in a better spot. So. All in all, that looks really good. Again, I should have tried to balance this out a little bit more, take some of the yellow out, because theirs is this 
nice color, but I think it looks really good. Now, the last thing I wanted to do is I wanted to denoise our image here. So if you look at their image here, they obviously have a much softer image. So they've really taken a lot of that noise out of our image here. Simply just did a noise reduction for my last note. Now, normally I would do my noise reduction in the first note, but I found for some reason, every time I put the noise reduction at the start, where I usually put it, it kept messing with all my DCTL. So something I have to look into and figure out what is going on there. It's never happened before, a little bit frustrating, but all I did was go to spatial, chunk it up a little bit, and then temporal threshold. I don't usually use the DaVinci ultra noise reduction. I don't feel like it works works all that well. So I just did a simple noise reduction here. Turn that on. And if we go full screen here, now looking at the image here, we have a fantastic looking image, beautiful skin tones. Our image has broken up nicely with this color. The lighting is so good. And that's because it is shot by a fantastic cinematographer. Again, make sure to check out his work. This stuff would not be possible if not for people like him and Blackmagic. So a big thanks to those guys. They're doing amazing work. Again, congratulations to Blackmagic. So all in all, happy with how the image looked. I never usually would go and copy someone else's grade, but I thought I'd try and knock it out as fast as possible. Again, I could probably do a little bit better, but I don't know, I think it looks really good anyway, even if it isn't exactly the same. Really happy with how it looks, and it really makes me want to go out and buy this camera now. <laughs> the camera is shooting this type of stuff. It's fantastic. They obviously used really expensive lenses, but still, great lighting, great production design, amazing acting. I mean, you know, just having a great time. So there are three different footages that you can actually download. So we'll go to the website and I'll show you where you can get them from. Okay, so now on the Blackmagic site, what you wanna do is come down to products here and then come down to the Pixis. Now this is in American dollars and I'm not sure why I'm Australian. So scroll all the way down and then this is the commercial, but you know, watch it on Patrick O'Sullivan's channel because you know, support the guy. He's making amazing stuff, really interesting stuff. It shows you like the crop ratio, which is kind of cool. So this is like the original camera, basically the um, pocket, the 1080p one. And then that's the 4K and then, you know, the, six, uh, the 6K one, et cetera, et cetera. But this is what it shoots now. So it's full frame, it's incredible. Come down to here. And now you can download three different clips. So you can download these guys hanging out in this little uh, house, having some glass of wines, having a good old time. And then this one here is when they're in the car, the camera slides out, pulls out, dollies out, whatever you want to call it. And then this one here, and that's the one we're working with. Three raw footages that you can download, which is incredible. I don't know any other camera manufacturer that does this kind of stuff, except for Ari, oh, and raw. You know what, a fair few. Anyway, <laughs> they're, they're great. So yeah, fantastic stuff. Make sure you check it out. Make sure you check out his channel and go and grade this footage and let me know how you go. If you wanna show me your work, then send me an email. I'd love to check it out. Comment below anything else you wanna see. Uh, go out and enjoy the sunshine. Don't be trapped inside watching YouTube videos all day. Go out and shoot some things maybe and then grade. And then yeah, shoot me an email if you like and show me what you can come up with this kind of footage. Really great footage, easy to work with. I'm super happy if you have any other questions about this footage or your color management or anything like that, please let me know. I I would more than happy I would be more than happy to help you along your color grading journey that was the most pretentious thing I've ever said but it is what it is anyway thank you very much for watching I'm Drew from Haiti Films go out and enjoy the sun and thank you again